Breast implants are placed in several different pockets depending on the preference of the patient and the surgeon. The first approach can be done using a subglandular approach where the pocket is made below the breast gland but above the, the chest wall muscles. This provides the advantage of having less discomfort post-operatively. Some fitness uh, experts prefer to not violate the muscle and they prefer to have it in a subglandular plane. The only disadvantage of a subglandular plane position is that if patients do not have a lot of soft tissue coverage in the upper pole, the implant can be very noticeable. Another disadvantage may be a slight increased risk of a capsular contracture formation. Another approach is using a submuscular approach. In this approach, a portion of the muscle is detached off the chest wall to allow the implant to sit properly in a submuscular position. Therefore, in the upper half to, to a third of the upper pole of the chest, the breast implant is covered by both the muscle as well as the gland itself. In the lower pole, it just has glandular coverage. But for thin patients, that is probably the best approach because the upper pole is then um, a little thicker in terms of soft tissue coverage and there's less risk of rippling. There is uh, also theory that uh, there may be a lower risk of capsular contracture of, around the implant when it's placed in a submuscular position. One other approach that's being used more recently is called a subfascial approach. The subfascial approach is where you're placing it below the fascial layer um, above the muscle. So this is both on a, under the gland and under the fascia, but not below the muscle. Some people feel that that may provide advantages for an extra layer of soft tissue coverage. And those are the three most common pocket positions for the breast implants.